Hello everybody and welcome back to the series you never thought you would be looking forward to. That's right, we are back on NFL Head Coach 2009, managing the Philadelphia Eagles to see if we can do the unthinkable, to see if we can get the team to a Super Bowl before they did in real life. We had the draft last episode, we had free agency last episode where there were some thrills, spills and... Frankly, awful contracts, if we're honest. There were some dreadful, dreadful contracts. But we are here ahead of preseason. And of course, that means one thing. It is a chance to take a look at how our team is going to fare. The young guys, the rookies, the legendary Ostrander, the quarterback that is not apparently playing. That's... That's happened. That wasn't gone to plan. But AJ Feely is clearly lighting up, so we have got nothing to worry about on that front. Now, in terms of positions to worry about, we are now extremely light at wide receiver after not really addressing it in the draft. And tight end isn't exactly much better with the baby Brent Selleck having a 67 rating at the moment. So there's clearly some work to be done as we make our way through preseason. Just focusing time on developing those players, learning the playbook. These are things you actually do in the objectives. But as we go towards game two... Yeah, still no sign of Ostrander. I don't know why I'm so fixated on him, to be honest. We know he is going to do absolutely nothing for this team. But there he is. One touchdown, no interceptions, I would argue. I mean, the guy had a better quarterback rating <laughs> than Donovan McNabb. Are we going to start him in week? Well, obviously not. But I think we've already found the player that we're hiving around. And it is just going to be the Ostrander nation. Now, we ended up going positive in preseason, which is always a good sign. However, if my rules of football manager apply here... A good preseason means a bad regular season. Our target for the upcoming year, we've got to go conservative. I think we'll go for a nice 2% approval increase, given we're already at a lower 40 one. We can't really take a massive hit. So we're going to go up a little bit. I think making the playoffs, there we go, look at that, is a good target to aim for. We kick off the season against the St. Louis Rams before, of course, they move to Los Angeles. And oh, no, oh dear, we've lost a wide receiver. Kevin Curtis has separated his shoulder. That's well, when it rains, it pours. Let's go into the free agency pool and see what we can find. The answer is, in terms of wide receiver, there's not that much there. However, bizarrely, a lot of them would be improvements over the players we've got currently. But one player did tickle my pickle, so to speak, and that was a man who, at 24 years old, was able to have 97 speed. Mr. Anderson! I know it's not Anderson, but beggars can't be choosers. He's signing with the Eagles. Will he make an impact in week one? Only time will tell. What I do find in interesting though is that the owner reminds you there's a game so William Kovner's gonna oh Liam don't forget don't forget there's a game you know the, the Rams are coming to down don't forget about him of course I'm not gonna we have got some winning to do we need to kick this season off with a bang guys if you enjoy this sort of content if you enjoy this sort of series make sure you leave a like and hit that subscribe button drop your comments down below because it's only gonna go downhill from here the minute this ball gets kicked off descent into absolute chaos begins so here we go the the 2009 season is officially underway in this parallel universe and we didn't concede a touchdown on the opening kickoff so that's a good step forward I'm impressed with that already already higher than my expectations now first play of the game can we really set the tone no no is he this no simple answer is no to that one. In fact, believe it or not, calling defensive plays is actually harder than it looks on TV. Looks easy, guys. Look at this. It's truly not. Now, the Rams here run a bit of play action. They're going to toss it to the end zone, and luckily, it falls incomplete. I was wiping the sweat from my forehead there, and as you can see, my coach is absolutely ecstatic. He's throwing in his safeties in there. The offense looks absolutely gormless. There's no other way for it to be described, but now the Rams want a bootleg again. They toss it over the top, and well, that took three minutes. We are down a touchdown within three minutes. We've got a mountain to climb, but don't worry because I have got faith in number five. We have got Brian Westbrook as well. Just as you should have faith in me as your head coach because when you can run plays like that, we're going to be marching up and down the field all afternoon. And our coach is getting excited by showing us how many points we've scored so far. Zero. But then I notice a kink in the defense. And unlike in Madden, you can not just call offensive adjustments, but you can create your own place. So I start tinkering, I start chipping away, and then we come up with a huge curl that's left wide open due to the offensive attention on the other side of the field. I am basically Sean McVay. There is no other word to describe it. That pass, of course, to Deveri Henderson, our brand new wide receiver. So a little subtle clap there from our head coach. He's excited, but this drive ultimately ends in a field goal. We can't push too far into the red zone, but David Akers sends one through and we keep it a one possession game. 
didn't take long for us to get the ball back either. On this third and 13, they go deep and it is batted down. And now the Eagles back in possession of the ball. Things are starting to heat up. The link amping up in excitement. What could this offense do second time around? Well, let's find out. The punt comes our way. It's a relatively decent punt at our own third. Oh my God, he's dropped it. Lito Shepard has dropped the punt. And the Rams recover at our third. I don't believe what I've just seen. My coach still looks as gone. Oh, he looks absolutely mortified, bless him. But I am distraught at this point. It's the most Liam video you could ever imagine. The Rams pick up the ball inside our 30-yard line. And now we have got a mountain to climb. Mark Bolger tries to throw a screen. He's picked off the very next play. Asante Samuel, the all-star free agent signing, comes up with a huge pick. Some say he's the best off-corner in the game. How can you disagree when he makes plays like that? The Eagles back in possession and our coach once again looking as excited as ever. A stop on an outside running play leaves us with third and 13 just on the edge of the red zone. What can Donovan McNabb cook up here? He's got the sauce in the pot. He's swirling it around and a wide open Reggie Brown. The first touchdown of the season for the Philadelphia Eagles. Admittedly, that would be short-lived because the Rams in predictable fashion march right down the other end and somehow... I, I don't know what happened there. I think that was a bad call defensively. So they're up 13-10. Brilliant. And as you can see, now somehow my coach is grilling Brian Westbrook. He's upset. Westbrook is crying. He's upset a running back grilling him for a play when he's on the bench for. I, what is going No wonder we're losing 14-10 now. Oh, well, we have to leave that behind us because we're back on offense again and, of course, have a mountain to climb. And as we storm up the middle, oh, my God, Asante Samuel has fumbled the ball. And that is two fumbles on two returns inside the first half. And how much is that going to cost us? On the surface, thank God, luckily, not very much. We hold them to a field goal here. They're just outside of the red zone. They go to kick it through the uprights. And it's a bit of a low kick. And it doesn't make it. And the link soars into eruption. The Eagles are still in this game. Down by four points. And time is ticking on in the second quarter. Can they mount a charge? And now... Liam, defensive charge. The answer is no, because they get the ball back, and uh, that goes straight through the upright. So, 17-10. Still a one-possession game. Don't fret. And, as always, I'm sure we can count on our head coach to look as enthralled as ever. The arms went in the air there. He's really not happy now. Grr. Well, the good news is we got the ball back. We're now marching into enemy territory. We're just outside of the red zone. Two backs in the backfield. What are we going to conjure up here? It's third and eight. They need something big. McNabb drops back. He misses a wide-open receiver. And that limits the Eagles to a field goal. So David Akers and his super right leg comes out again. And the Eagles remain within one possession. We are now down by four points. So a touchdown would be helpful. But all we can do is keep chipping away at that lead. This Rams defense is tough. We can't just beat it by doing shoddy plays. And, well, fumbling twice certainly doesn't help our cause. But now we're deep into the fourth quarter after a substanceless third. And the Eagles are driving on. Literally nothing happened in the third quarter, my time. Nothing whatsoever. So at the start of the fourth, we're in possession of the ball. And a huge reception from our rookie wide receiver. The man, the myth, the legend. Who everyone was wondering, why would Liam select the rookie receiver that just embodied himself? The simple answer is, the guy seems to be pretty good. And McNabb fakes a handoff, throws to the back of the end zone. And that one is broken up like my last relationship. Somehow Brian Westbrook was wasn't on the field there so I'm not exactly sure what's going on but now I accidentally in trying to sub him in I made a mistake and TC Ostrander the legend is on the field this is the man we hope will one day take over our franchise he drops back takes an easy sack well done Ostrander well done we did actually complete a heroic check down for seven yards prior to that play, but we're not the Sam Bradford Eagles. We're not going to bore you with check down highlights, but we do get ourselves into field goal territory to get ourselves within one point, which means we could have gone for it, but I would much rather get that field goal within range so that we can win by a field goal because scoring touchdowns against this team is clearly a lot harder than it looks. So Akers, money again, gets the ball through the upright. So we're now within a point. And the end to this game will have you on the edge of your seats. We have got three and a half minutes remaining. The defense is on the field. It is third and one. 
at the St. Louis 42. We dial up the blitz. We get the boys revved up. We are getting ready to pull that Beyblade cord so hard. It flies into the arena at the speed of sound. But will it be enough? We're predicting a run up the middle. We have game plan for a run up the middle. All our chips are on the table. The it is down to the players to execute. And through the trenches comes our linebacker. What a huge sack that was from Omar Gaither. He keeps this game swinging in the balance and with two and a half minutes to go, the Rams forced to punt. The Eagles get the ball. There are two minutes left on the clock. We try to run up the middle first and that gets smothered. It is worth noting we've got three timeouts but we don't want to dip into them if we can avoid it. So we have now got second and 12. McNabb drops it. It's Ostrander and he's sacked. I, d I don't know why he's on the field. He's just run on. He wants the franchise. Now he wants to be the king of the hill. I don't know what happened there. But it is third and 18 with a minute and 36 seconds to go. It seems like all is lost. We have been here before in real life. McNabb drops back. Tries to throw outside and it's missed. And now it's fourth and 18. And you can start to feel the deflation of fans in the stadium. And this has to be a monumental play. The game is on the line. They're down by a point. They only need a field goal, but this has to be at least, at least an 18-yard completion. McNabb yet to turn the ball over today. The offense has been stuttering, but it has not lacked some of those big passing plays. Are we going to find a late twist in the tail here? This is the last chance saloon. The Ubers arrive for your night out. Get in the back, lads. We're off to go clubbing. They find Reggie Brown, and Reggie Brown storms up the side. He's wide open. He brushes off two defenders, and all the way home, Reggie Brown gets his second touchdown of the afternoon, showboating all the way to the end zone. Touchdown, Eagles. We go up with one minute, 20 to play. The head coach is ecstatic. I am bouncing around like a kangaroo on a trampoline. What a pass that was. 82 yards to the house and surely, surely that's going to be the nail in the coffin. It is now third and 10 on their final drive. 40 seconds left to go. Our pass rush is being tripped up all over the place. Bolger throws outside and somehow we can't bring him down, but we stop him short of the mark. So it is now fourth and three. The game itself comes down to this play. My heart is thundering like a jackhammer right now. All this defense has to do is stop what is likely going to be a shot down the field. We've been here before. It's a cover three. They try to run outside. Oh my god, they break the tackle. And despite a thunderous hit from Brian Dawkins, that is not the tea we wanted. The tea has gone sour. We've spilt it all over the floor. 24 seconds now remain. It's first and 10 after that little run for a completion. And they throw to the back of the end zone. It should be picked. It's not. And just like that, the Rams, the Rams go up. And my heart is in pieces. I can't even put into words how much that hurts. Our secondary is supposed to be the best in the league. We have got the three best corners, arguably, in the league. And after we didn't kick the PAT, we went for two and failed. They tried to put this game out of reach. And luckily... Asante Samuel comes down with a big stop, but I, that is the most heartbreaking thing you could possibly imagine. With a one-point differential, there are 21 seconds left in this game. Is there yet another twist in the tail? The simple answer is we are out of timeouts. It's now third and seven with eight seconds to go. So this either has to go to the end zone or out of bounds or just simply not a completion over the middle of the field. McNabb knows it and he dumps it off. So that's the end of the game and we can't do anything else so that might be the wildest end to a game imaginable with a minute to go fourth and 18 we get an 82 yard touchdown and somehow find a way to choke that game and maybe if we hadn't been greedy and just gone for the extra point it'd be tied we'd be in overtime we'd be looking at a win but here are the stats regardless rushing the ball didn't work for whatever reason even behind our stout offensive line Brian Westbrook Eight attempts for 11 yards is not good enough. Reggie Brown, 150 yards, two touchdowns. And then you've got, of course, Lavelle Hawkins, our star in the making. A rookie wide receiver who's come in and made an instant impact. Asante Samuel leads the team in tackles, and that's kind of expected. But I just can't get over how disappointing that is. That was a ridiculous end. And if I'm honest, I, I well, one, my approval is now 21. That's pathetic. So... The fans have gone minus 13. The media hate me. The owner hates me. This has gone well. Will we make it past week two? We have got a matchup against the Dallas Cowboys. Guys, if you enjoyed this series, 
please let me know. Leave a like, leave a comment, because I can't see it getting past week four before we get fired. But I didn't think I'd have this much fun playing a game from 2009. But alas, here we are. So if you enjoy watching it, let me know. Is it time for Ostrander to start it? No, Liam, leave it. Leave Ostrander alone. But thank you for tuning in, guys. I'll see you next time.